Yeah, so tired after that. Had to be at least 20 pounds. Okay, here we go. So, we're back everyone. I'm back with a brand new bag. I'm making a lot of James Brown references lately. I don't know why. By the way, check this out. This is B5. Look at this. My wife got this for me. It's a little B revival kit. Oh yeah. The bees on the ground struggling to survive. B5. Them. You'll find a single click solution to everything you see in this video. Now you do want to build this on a flat surface, by the way. It's not like super imperative, but I swear I just had a razor blade in my hand and now it's gone. So what you want to first do is separate all your items here. Okay, so one of these should be threaded. This one is threaded. So we'll set that aside. So we got our hardware pack. This is our T-nuts and our screws. So to, to save some cost, I went with Imperial screws instead of metric. So I prefer metric personally, but Imperial, for whatever reason, is cheaper. So I don't know if it's the process is cheaper or what, but it just is. So these are the two different models here. You have one that has a slotted side, right? And one that is regular on both sides. So you need to make sure and separate those so you don't get them confused and accidentally use them where you shouldn't. Now this is not going to include, you know, mounting the seat. That's going to be up to you, but the, the seat rails are included so you, you can still attach something to the seat rails. But you want to start loading these up here, right? Just kind of give it one or two threads. If you have some small children, now would be a good time to employ them and don't pay them anything. Unless they have troubles putting things in their mouths and choking, don't let them help. So after you get all the hardware on there, on every single hole, right? All of them are on there, including these. Take all eight of your round ones, not the slotted ones, but just the, the regular round ones and slide them in. So you want to group them in pairs of twos on each side. And they would be facing up. So at this point, all you do is grab four of your non-threaded 17 inch. And you're gonna bring the, uh, the rails here close to each other, and you're going to slide it through. Doesn't really matter which way the T-nuts are facing. If it does matter to you for any reason, if you're, um, if you're genuinely obsessive compulsive about that kind of stuff, you can, but it really doesn't matter. It's going to be strong as hell no matter what. I mean, honestly, folks, we're almost done. <laughs> This is how simple the build is. Pivot these to give yourself some clearance to work here. That's why you want to leave them loose. Now just butt them up against each other. So we're tightening up these, not the rails yet. Make sure it's butted all the way against it so it's flush. You will notice that these angle brackets are slightly not square and it's intentional so when you tighten them up they put a little bit of opposing tension on the joint here so that the the screws don't back out as easily so it's kind of like a, a built-in spring system but you should be able to butt these up here and have these be really flush right at this uh right at the point here so we're going to tighten the furthest ends first and then we're going to find out where these things go later when you have your seat, when you have your pedals. Um, we're gonna mount up the Camus C5 pedals and we're also gonna mount up a Camus C5 wheelbase. Now, if you're like me, you're gonna want your pedals as low as possible and your seat as high as possible. Now, if you're into open wheel or you know F1 stuff or whatever, you're gonna want your seat as low as possible and your pedals as high as possible. You're gonna wanna do opposite of what I'm doing right now for most types of racing that, at least that I know of, this configuration I'm going to show you will be the best for you. So, 
in this configuration. Now, the only reason I say to put the, the brackets on the inside is because, so in case your feet are hanging down here, you don't cut your toe or something like that on this sharp bracket. It'll be underneath or, you know, tucked in to the, the frame here. And you want these to be flush with the edge. Now what you're gonna do is take your upright mounts, slide it in, this side, and then this side. There you go. You don't need to tighten these down yet. Just make sure they're on there. And you take your two uprights, just slide it on in. Okay. So now you wanna make sure this plate is all the way on the ground, and then you wanna push down on this upright to where it's completely flat with this surface. And then you can tighten these up all the way right now. Same thing on the other side. I'd recommend doing the bottom one first, the bottom screw first the bottom of the upright screw. So not the very bottom, but the bottom of the upright screw. It's starting to look like a rig, isn't it? Now we're gonna take our wheelbase bar with the threads on the end, our 17 incher, and we're gonna put these angle brackets, all you see here, in a particular order. Take one angle bracket with the slot, grab an open screw here. Okay, it doesn't have to be super tight. That's just gonna serve as our cap for now. Now we want one slotted with both screws on the end here, and we want the round hole to be towards the extrusion and the slotted part on the outside. Then we want one without a screw on the slot section. Slide that in. Another one without a screw. And then one more with both sides filled and slotted side on the outside. So we should have a total of four on the inside here. Now another slotted without the screw on there. On the opposing side, same thing, one more. On that same channel. Same bat time, same bat channel. And then cap it off with another slotted. Slotted towards the aluminum extrusion. Another free screw. Now we can mount the wheelbase 17 incher to the uprights. The side with four goes towards the back. You're in the side with four on the rear. So this is the kind of fiddly part, okay? It's on there. So both sides need to look like this. So this can rotate. Remember, the slotted is to be on the horizontal plane. The other side is the same. Not sure you can see that. So we'll go ahead and tighten up the fronts. So this doesn't keep on wiggling around. Okay, so now you should be able to position these towards the middle. So now snug everything up to where, kind of about where we're gonna have it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just for the sake of this thing not rattling around, I'm gonna tighten some of these upright bolts up, just like a one or two. Okay, now we should see it being a little bit more solid. And now we can attach our wheelbase. So I designed this rig and this mounting setup specifically for the CSLDD and the Camus C5. Okay, let's go ahead and center her up. So now go ahead and tighten these up to the actual wheelbase bar. You can go and uh, really tighten these down now. Make sure that the, the mounting plate is completely flat right here. Then once you get the angle of the steering wheel correct, after you have your seat and stuff like that, lock it down right here, right here, right here, and right here. And you should be golden on the uh, wheel. Let's go ahead and mount the pedals now. This of course is a very small pedal set, so we're gonna have to move these closer to each other. these T-nuts in here. Again, doesn't really matter which way they go. As long as the raised side is pointed down, you're good. 
Okay, we just need a total of four. So, you know, if you have a different pedal set or you have a thicker pedal set, like your pedal plate is just thicker in general, you might need some longer hardware. Just keep that in mind. So if you're doubting something, you know, maybe get longer screws. This is Imperial hardware. So it's not metric. The thread patterns are different. The thread pitches are different. The, the size of the Allens to put these on here are different. So the rest of the hardware you see here should be for your seat. So don't worry that you have extra. That's okay. Um, we also didn't use these plates because these are only for the CSL DD. Bonus, you got some extra plates to work with in the future. Of course, at this point, we would find how close these pedals need to be to us. So you want to get the chair you're going to use, whatever it may be. And then you want to put it where that makes the most sense. So for me, it's going to be about right here. Okay, so that feels good right there. Let's go ahead and lock everything down. Yeah. This thing's gonna handle the power this wheelbase can put out easily. Now, of course, you don't wanna pull down or push up. I mean, you never do anyway. But yeah, welcome to your new super simple, super cheap rig. This should be everything that you need to get started in sim racing. You can add a shifter bracket on the side. The possibilities are endless. $150. I'm 5 foot 11. So if I can make this thing work for me, you probably can too. Oh, and you want to see one of the coolest features about this rig? Let's say you got a closet. Boom. It's very portable. Out of sight, out of mind. Deploy it. Ready for action. Super lightweight. Super durable. Ding! So anyway, hopefully this video helped you out in your sim racing journey. Everything in this video is going to be in the link below. One click for the entire rig. That's all you got to do. One click. It puts everything in your cart. The C5 bundle will be there as well. But keep in mind, this is also compatible with the CSL DD. And maybe even the Moza. I don't know. I have not confirmed that. Hopefully someone will confirm that. All it would take to adapt it to that would probably be like a bracket or two, honestly. You're a bracket or two away from glory. Have a good day. Thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you in a future video.